Hi, Peter Charles here, Fooked for Life, fly fishing. And today I'm going to go back and redo a video, well, at least part of it. Uh, recently I did a Blue Thunder video. And unlike other videos, I did not pay close attention to this one. Normally I do some homework and uh, review the uh, fly and a little bit of the history, that kind of stuff, construction techniques. But in this particular case, I had been given some Blue Thunders many years ago by Ian James, who was the originator of the pattern. And I also tied up a few. So I had a memory of actually doing it. And plus, I ha had a bad picture of one. So instead of doing my usual research, I just used the bad picture and a bad memory. And I forgot something. So what we're going to do is I'm going to first splice in the bit that's right from my old video. You'll see I'll have a different shirt on. And then we're going to get to the section that I screwed up, and I'll do it correctly. Because I was looking at that fly afterwards and going, there's something wrong. And I went and searched through some pattern books. I found a, a good picture and a good description. I went, oh, yeah, I see what I forgot. So let's get going. Our hook is a size 4 streamer hook. It's 2 extra heavy, uh, 5 extra long. Our body is going to be uni mylar in a gold silver, and we're going to be using the silver side. Our rib is uni French in a small silver oval. Our thread is black ADOT in the Vivas. Okay, here's the thing I forgot the white calf tail. And our wing is purple flashaboo. And I know it says blue thunder, and <laughs> we're using purple. Don't ask me why. I don't know. Okay, let's get started. So first we tie on our tinsel. Let's pull it back. A couple of wraps to hold it. And next our mylar. And if you've not used mylar before, when you want to use the silver side, tie it gold side up in the reverse if you want to use gold. Because when you start to wind it, it flips. Okay, now we're going to skid this all back. And you want to be as neat as possible because when you wind your mylar over it, it will show all the lumps and bumps if you're not neat. Oh, we'll stop it just past the hook point and then we'll come back. I know, tedious, but it, it gives us a smooth body and, you know, sometimes tedious is uh, nicer. Now, I could have tied everything on at the back. That creates a bump. All right. So you could decide that you're going to live with the bump. And if you're just going to do a fishing fly, you're, you don't care about its appearance, tie the material on at the back and live with the bump. Okay, pull it nice and tight and begin to turn. And make sure your mylar is in touching turns so we don't see any black. Now keep tension on the mylar so it doesn't skid. Make sure you get a couple of good wraps in there and keep it underneath. And trim off. Clean that up. Uh, it also puts the ribbing at odds with the wind of the uh, Mylar. Again, keep it underneath. Just bring our thread to the back of the head. There we go. Okay, I've picked up my calf tail. I've picked a nice straight bit. You've got two choices here. You can tie it just as is, 
or you can stack it. I prefer to tie it as is because it gives me a nice taper. Now, as far as length is concerned, you want to be longer than hook shank. This is a streamer pattern, so you know about a half inch longer than the than the streamer a hook. Uh, pinch loop to keep things on top. Bind it down. There we go. Now I'll trim that off. You need maybe four or five strands because we're going to double it over. Okay, just size it. I like to bring my thread about in the middle of the head for a lot of these tying in of this kind of material. Uh, just make sure it's on top and bind it in. Okay, there we go, the Blue Thunder tied correctly with the calf tail wing. Uh, it's a very effective pattern. I've done well with it in the past, and I haven't used it for the past few years, but um, I think, uh, you know, I'm going to have to get it back out in the river with this uh, fly because it does work.